I'm now ready to get cutting out. Now for the time being, just pretend that this isn't velvet. Pretend that it's a regular jersey or Ponty Roma that I'm cutting out because I want to show you that first. You have on page, um, what is it, page five and six of your booklet, your laying out plans. So they're asking you to fold in three first and put your two pieces on the fold here and then the remaining fabric fold in half and then you're going to cut out your um, neck bands and your sleeve pieces on the remaining piece. So the reason why we take our fabric and we fold twice, it gives us two fold lines against which we can place our centre front and our centre back pieces and then cut them out. Now if you're using jersey um, or Ponty Roma or um, something like that, then this is how you would cut it on the fold. And then the remaining piece here at the bottom, you would use to cut out your sleeve and your neck bands. Um, with jersey, it's very important to note that you have the selvages you can see are in the centre here. Your pattern pieces must run parallel, so your grain lines must run parallel to your selvages, so that the direction of the knit goes down the body vertically. You can't cut knit across like this. It has to go this way. So if you follow your instructions in your booklet um, for cutting out your pieces, um, just lay them down. You're going to either weigh them down and use your rotary cutter or pin them and then use your scissors. And then you're going to obviously remember to cut your notches or to chalk mark your notches as your reference points. Now for me, I'm using velvet, so slightly different procedure applies. Now the first thing to do is to decide which way the nap is running. If I stroke my hand from the top to the bottom here, that feels very rough and uncomfortable. And you can see I'm almost sort of making marks on the fabric. Go this way and it's nice and smooth. So I can tell then that my piece of fabric needs to go this way. And all of my pattern pieces I am going to cut so that the nap is running downwards. So this is my neck, this is my hem, this is my shoulder, this is my sleeve hem. The velvet is always, the pile is always smooth when you stroke it downwards and it's pretty obvious by just stroking the fabric to see how that goes. So I now know that this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. I'm going to put my fabric the other way so that I'm looking at the wrong side. And when I say velvet, I mean velour because it's a knitted, um, a knitted one, this one. So velvet is the woven version and velour is the knitted version, the stretch version. <clears throat> so now I'm going to need to come up with my lay plan, um, which I'm going to have to deviate from that given what was given in the instructions because I'm cutting it out flat rather than um, on the fold. And in a way, this is good because you can almost sort of be a bit more economical. So I'll start off by placing my pattern pieces out just to see what the best layout is, and then I'll get cutting. So my first piece is ready to cut out. I've got my cutting mat underneath and I've weighed it down with my makeshift pattern weights. They're actually coasters that are really heavy. The first thing that I did was I measured from the selvage into the grain line at two points and made sure that this grain line is perfectly parallel to the selvage. Once I've got my grain line correct, then I just stroked out the pattern, laid it nice and flat and then weighed it down. And I'm now going to cut it out with my rotary cutter. Before cutting, I made sure that all of my other pattern pieces could happily fit on my fabric. And over the other end of my table there, I've just brought up any remaining fabric that won't fit on the table and just brought that up and rested that on the table. What you don't want is for your fabric to be lying over the side and pulling, you know, the weight of the fabric itself will pull it down and weigh it down and you will get this fabric stretching. You want the fabric to be relaxed and at ease. So bring all of that weight of the fabric onto your table, fold up the piece that you're not cutting out and then you can unfold it as you come to it. So I've measured from the selvage here and I'm ready to now cut out my um, first piece. 
Now the second piece I'm going to put next to it and I'm going to just make sure that I try to keep a little bit of that selvage to measure from from my next piece. I couldn't fit them quite both on the table together. And you just have to be careful because your fabric will want to kind of walk around a bit. So either weigh it down or pin it down and then cut it out. You can pin and use scissors if you like. Um, if that is a bit tricky for you, the other option would be to weigh your pattern down and carefully draw around your pattern piece with chalk, lift your pattern piece off and then cut it with scissors. That's your other option. As you go, make sure that you keep all of your scraps to hand so that um, you've got some scraps to test your stitches with. And that's my first piece cut out. So before I remove the pattern, I just want to mark the centre back. And there's one notch to mark on each sleeve. And this is an unusual pattern in that they have one notch on the back sleeve and two notches on the front um, armhole, which is um, unusual, but it corresponds. So I've just marked on the notches of the armhole and the notch at the centre back neck. And that centre back neck no notch, the centre back neck notch, will help me match up my um, neckline later on. There's our first pattern piece. And whilst I've got this here, I can just conveniently fit my neck band down here. This is a little narrow for the weight, so I'm just going to pin carefully and cut it out. And when you've cut the neck band, don't forget to mark the corresponding notches on your pattern because this will give you your shoulder position and your centre front position. And this really will help to um, match up your neck band. So I'm now ready to cut out my front and my sleeve, I can measure from the straight grain on this side in, out. So all together I have four pieces, my pattern back, pattern front, my sleeve and my um, neckband. Now of course, don't forget you're going to need two sleeves as well because we're cutting on the flat, not on the fold. So once I've cut out one of my sleeves up there, I need to flip my pattern over and cut another. Don't um, do this, don't cut it out like this and then cut another one like this. Remember to flip your pattern piece over for your second sleeve so that you get a pair. Very important there, otherwise you'll have two left sleeves. We're now ready to start making our top. So I've laid out my back piece here in front of me. I'm looking at the right side and then I'm going to get my front piece and lay that on top of it, matching up the shoulder seam. So right sides together and match up the shoulders. And the first step is to sew those shoulder seams. So I'll just hold those together in place with some wonder clips. And then I'm going to use my overlocker to sew the shoulders. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use a sewing machine. And I'll talk you through, once I've got these pinned together, the kind of um, stitches that you're going to use. So they're now clipped together and ready to sew. Now, if you are using your sewing machine, then you may have a zigzag stitch on it. And this is good for sewing knitted stretch fabrics because the diagonal lines allow the seam to stretch. If you think about it, if you used a straight stitch line, it wouldn't stretch, the, the stitches would crack and break uh, when you stretch the garment. So a zigzag line is what we're looking for here. So select your zigzag, or you may have something like this, which is a zigzag, but with dashes. So it's like a stitch, 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 like a broken zigzag. And that's really good because it gives you the strength of a running stitch, but um, with the zigzag shape, which is allowing that seam to stretch. 
The third type, so you've got your regular zigzag, you've got your running stitch. The third type of stitch is this one here, which looks like a lightning strike. Not all machines will have this. Um, it's like a shallow zigzag, and that's also good. So have a little play around and see which one, you know, get your scraps of fabric, try um, some different stitches just to see what works for you. When you're sewing with um, velvet, if you're using the velour, reduce your tension a little. So I've reduced my tension to three um, and I'm using a stretch needle size 75. Um, keep your scraps from when you cut out, do some experiments, see what works for you. And um, then, you know, once you're happy with your stitch settings, then you can go ahead and start sewing. With velour and also with um, knitted, any knitted fabrics, the edges don't fray like they do with woven, so you don't need to worry about finishing those raw edges. You might get a little bit of fluff coming off initially um, when you cut it, but then after that it won't fray, so you should be um, all good. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to carry on by using my overlocker, but just to let you know that you are absolutely fine to sew with your stretch knits or your velour on your regular machine. So I'm going to use my overlocker to sew most of my top. I've got all four cones of thread set up. I'm going to switch that light off because it's flickering, isn't it? So I've got all four cones of thread set up there with my pink colour. My tension is just normal on um, five, which is the neutral tension setting. I've got both my left and right needles threaded. So I'm using a four thread overlocking stitch for the top because I'm sewing, cutting and finishing in one go. My stitch length is 2.5 which is just the regular everyday stitch length and I've incre um, increased my differential feed from N for neutral up to 1.5 and this is typically the differential feed setting that I would use for stretch knit fabrics. Again have a little play around with some scraps until you get um, to the kind of settings that suit your fabric that you're sewing with. Differential feed, just to let you know, it's to do with the feed dogs underneath your presser foot here. You have two sets and with a neutral differential feed, they work together. With a higher number, they scrunch together to eliminate stretching. And with a lower number, they pull the fabric apart to make ruffles. Um, so you just want to increase your differential feed slightly to stop your fabric from rippling and waving as it goes through your overlocker. The seam allowance is included on this pattern of one centimetre. So I'm going to just measure in a centimetre and draw a little line there with my uh, fabric marker pen. That's going to give me a starting point. Um, sewing with an overlocker, you don't have those useful needle plate guides that you have with sewing machines. And I just want to make sure that that one centimetre line is measuring up with my um, right hand, left hand side needle. So that's where my stitch line will be. Right, so normally I'd have my light on, but I'm aware of the fact that it's flickering. So I'm just gonna leave it off for stitching this. And the overlocker will actually be cutting off a small amount of fabric as I go. There's a lot of fun happening in the other room. So as you can see, my overlocker is cutting off a little bit of scrap. And there's my seam and it's nice and flat and straight. I haven't got any of that wavy um, or bunching up and that's just because I adjusted that differential feed. And I can see that my stitch line there is in line with the, the one centimetre pen mark I gave myself. So I'm just going to do the same on both shoulders to create those shoulder seams. So there's my shoulder seams sewn. So now that those shoulder seams are sewn, we're going to move on to the neckline. So I've got my neck band here and the first stage is to fold that together lengthways so that you're creating a circular band. And we're just going to sew, make that clear to see, we're going to sew along there. So here's my neck band. There it is. I've just um, overlocked that together. Just press that seam to one side and you've now got a circular hoop. 
and you want to just fold that in half, wrong sides together, so that the raw edges are matching and you're looking at the nice uh, right side of the fabric, the nice side of the fabric. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to attach this to the neckline opening. So there is my neckband and we now want to place this onto the top itself. There's my seam. On the opposite side you'll have a notch or a chalk mark and that will correspond to the shoulder on the other side. Don't forget that your neckline is scooped more at the front than it is at the back. So you need to make sure that you're lining this up the correct way round. So there's my shoulders where my thumbs are there. And you can see that I've got more neck band at the front than I have at the back, so that will fit correctly. If I had it the other way round, upside down, then you would have it bagginess at the top and a tautness at the bottom there, at the front of the top. So just make sure that you've got that the right way round and make sure that you did transfer those markings, um, which will make it easier. So let's start by just pinning the um, seam on my neckline to the corresponding area on my shoulder. So I'm gonna use clips. It's a bit nicer to use. And I'm just gonna clip that in place. And as I'm doing so, I'm pushing the shoulder seam towards the back of the neck. And then I'll come round to the opposite side where I've got another notch there. And I'll match that up to the other shoulder seam. And then at the centre back, I will match up those notches. So the notches on the neckline there will match up with my centre back mark. And this is just to ensure that you have an even amount of um, neck band as you go all the way around your neckline. The neck band is cut deliberately smaller than the neckline opening. And then you have to stretch the neck band onto the neckline opening. And it does, just, you know, if you, as long as you take your time and you just go around and first of all match up all those notches. So there's my front notches matching up there. There we go. So I've now got my front notches, my back notches, <clears throat> and my shoulder seam notches all matched up around my neckline. I can now. So stretch out that neckband in between those points and pin or clip the rest of the neckband in place. So I want all those raw edges to be matching together, the raw edges of the folded in half neckband and the raw edge of my neckline opening on my top. And I just want to evenly distribute the fullness of the neckband. And what this means is that the neckband will just pull the neckline in and it will sit flat against your neck and if you don't if you have a neckband that's the same length you would just end up with sort of a baggy neckline that would stick up a bit which isn't so good so i'll just pin or clip all the way around and with this you know the more clips really the better i think and what we're going to do next is we're actually going to just stitch this and baste it in place on our sewing machine. So I just do one section at a time. And I've got an even amount of fullness in between each of those clips, an even amount of fullness around the neckline there. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go straight onto my overlocker because if the neckline isn't quite right, then I don't want to have overlocked it because it's very difficult to um, unpick. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually baste it in place on my sewing machine first and then once I'm happy with the look of the neckline, so I'm happy that there aren't any tucks or gathers or pleats or puckers, I'm happy that it's sitting flat and that everything's matching up nicely, then I can go ahead and overlock it. And in the meantime, if once I've sewn this in place and I've basted it in place, I'm not happy with it, it's very easy to unpick. So I'm just going to use a normal zigzag stitch. And likewise, if you're making this on a sewing machine, again, use a normal zigzag stitch um, to begin with because it's easy to unpick. And then once you're happy with your neckline, then you can move on to 
stitching it in a more secure fashion with your with your running stitch or um, your specialist stretch stitch if you have one on your machine. So as I go around, I'm just going to make sure that everything's sitting nice and flat. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to make sure that all those raw edges are matching and that there's no pleats or puckers. And I'll just take out the clips as I go and I just want to make sure that everything's sitting flat. And then once I've finished this, I can try it on and just check that the neckline isn't standing proud um, because it's quite tricky with the velour to get it sitting flat. And with the velvet, what I find is, is if every few stitches, I make sure that my needle is down in my work and I just lift up that press of it. Just to release any fabric that's sort of getting stretched as it's going round and to stop the layers from walking away from each other. I've now come all the way back to the beginning where I started. And my neckline is just basted in place there. Incidentally, when you're doing this, once you've clipped or pinned your neckline in place, don't leave the clips and pins in your fabric for a long time. Sew it straight away and remove them as you sew. Um, don't sort of clip everything together and then walk away and come back tomorrow because you don't want your clips to leave um, marks on your fabric. So just a bit of advice there. Try and leave your clips or pins in your fabric for the shortest possible time. So I'm looking around my neckline now and I can see that I haven't got any um, pleats or tucks. And I can see that the neckline looks fairly even all the way around, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, it's also not sort of protruding too much, it's sitting quite nice and flat. So with a bit of a press and everything, I think that that will, will just um, sit really nicely. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to finish off the inside of the neckline just by overlocking it so that the interior seams look nice and neat and match the rest of my garment now that, I've, now that I'm happy um, that that's okay. And if you're using your sewing machine, you could probably just leave the neckline at that um, zigzag stitch. Um, if you want to, you can go back over it again with a running stitch, it's up to you. And I'm happy with that neckline. There aren't any gathers or tucks. If you did have any areas that you didn't like the look of, you could just very easily unpick a couple of stitches, smooth it back out and correct it. So I'm happy now that I can go ahead and overlock that together just to create it a nice neat seam. Um, now what I'm going to do is when with my overlocking I'm going to start just about here and go around in a circle. I start here just um, just to the front of one of the shoulder seams. The reason being that if I start anywhere along here you'll see where I've started and ended and it will look messy and the inside back neckline when the top is hanging up. Um, and if I obviously do it in this front then it might be a bit you know have a little bulk there at the front so if I just do it here it's a nice inconspicuous place um, to start and finish my overlocking just just forward of the seam I don't want to start it directly on top of the seam because again that adds bulk so just to the front of one of the shoulder seams I'm going to overlock all the way around that neckline and when as I'm doing so I'll just be very careful that I'm not getting any of the fabric from the top caught up. So I should just very easily and slowly and carefully pass that neckline through my overlocker. Just make sure that nothing's caught up underneath. And make sure that I'm not stretching it at all as it goes through. And that's now all overlocked around that back neck there and front as well. And I will give that a little bit of a press or a bit of a steam, I should say, um, once I've finished, just to help that sit nice and flat when it's worn. Um, now, if you're making the velvet or the velour version, 
then that's the neckline finished. If you're going to make the jersey or the Ponte Roma version, there is an extra step. And if you look, you can see that there's this stitch line going around the neck. And what you want to do is you want to go round and you want to stitch your um, seam allowance to your top all the way round with a zigzag or running stitch. So this stitch here that you can see attaches your seam allowance, which has been overlocked, to your top, helping it to sit down flat so that you get this nice flat neckline finish here.